a, a couple of things of note with that. The faster motion uh, of the storm could pay a part in the future track of this system because remember the faster it's going, the wider the churn is going to be and that could cause it to end up coming a little further, uh, taking that track and kind of shifting a little further west. And through the past few model runs, we have seen that track when it goes through North Carolina, Southeastern Virginia vacillate back and forth um, about 60 miles, which is not uncommon with these storms. And that does have implications because again, even for you in Florida, as you're watching this, remember this storm is, it's, we said, Ian said, it's lopsided. Everything's, all the real actions on the east side of the storm, uh, including those squalls that are about uh, 25 miles to the southwest of Venice right now. It's really where the strongest part uh, that we can see on the, the, the radar out of Tampa happens to be. But that could affect where we see the potential for some severe weather here in Virginia, possibly over the southeastern part of the state could be, you know, in eastern portions of North Carolina. Of course, if it can come a little further inland, stay a little further inland, it may it may knock the uh, the sustained winds down a little bit, but that's not really going to be um, a, a big factor with this. In fact, you know, the, the change between a tropical storm at 70 miles an hour and a hurricane at 74 miles an hour, they, they wound it up to 75, is, is really like going about... Uh, going about 64 miles an hour on the interstate and 69 miles an hour on the interstate and 65 mile an hour speed zone, you really don't notice the difference. The effects on you are going to be the same. It's, it's more just the naming, the naming structure of it.